Chapter 28, At Work After collective evening prayer, Tobias turned on a receiver in order to receive word from the Samaritans at work in the umbral. Rightly curious, I was informed that work teams of that sort communicated with their headquarters at set hours. I felt somewhat tired from all my intense effort, but my heart was singing hymns of inner joy. I had experienced the joy of labor at last. A spirit of service supplies us with mysteriously invigorating tonics. After he had turned on the small apparatus, he began transmitting a message after a few minutes. Samaritans to the Ministry of Regeneration. Samaritans to the Ministry of Regeneration. There is a lot of work to be done in the abyss of darkness. We have managed to free a large crowd of unfortunate spirits. We have rescued 29 brothers from the spiritual darkness. 22 are mentally deranged, and 7 are experiencing complete psychic exhaustion. Our teams are getting the transportation ready. We will arrive a few minutes after midnight. Please get everything ready. Noticing that Narcissa and Tobias exchanged wondering glances as soon as the strange voice stopped, I couldn't help asking the question on the tip of my tongue. What's going on? Why transportation en masse? Aren't they all spirits? Tobias smiled and explained, Brother, you are forgetting that you yourself arrived at the Ministry of Assistance in no other way. I know about the episode of your coming. We must always bear in mind that nature makes no leaps, and on the earth or in the circles of the umbral, we are clothed in very heavy fluids. The ostrich and the swallow are both birds with wings, but the former can't rise into the heights unless carried there, whereas the latter cuts swiftly through the vast regions of the sky. Indicating to me that there wasn't time for questions at the moment, he addressed Narcissa. Tonight's group is going to be very large. We must make immediate preparations. We're going to need a lot of beds, the nurse replied, somewhat worried. Don't worry about that, Tobias answered resolutely. We'll room the disturbed patients in Ward 7 and the exhausted ones in Chamber 33. Then, as though remembering something very serious, he raised his right hand to his forehead and exclaimed, The question of lodging will be easy to solve, but the problem of assistance is a different matter. Our strongest assistants have been called to guarantee communications services involving the earth itself, Our dark clouds are now surrounding the world of incarnates. We need personnel for the night shift because the workers helping the Samaritans will return extremely tired. I'm willing to help as much as I can, I exclaim spontaneously. Tobias gave me a look of deep sympathy, mixed with gratitude, which made me experience a pleasant inner happiness. But do you really want to stay in the chambers all night, he asked, surprised. Aren't others going to do the same, I inquired in turn. I'm feeling strong and fit, and I need to make up for lost time. My friend embraced me, adding, Well then, I confidently accept your cooperation. Narcissa and the other companions will also stay on duty. I'll also send over Venancio and Salustro, because I know I can trust them. I myself won't be able to remain here on night watch due to previous commitments. However, if it is necessary, you or any of the assistants may inform me of any serious incident. I'll draw up the work plan to make your jobs as easy as possible. We hurriedly began to make arrangements. While five attendants worked with Narcissa to prepare adequate clothing and nursing equipment, Tobias and I moved heavy supplies into Ward 7 and Chamber 33. I couldn't explain what was happening to me. In spite of the fatigue in one of my arms, I felt an inexpressible joy in my heart. In workshops, where most look for work because they understand in sublime value, service comprises the supreme joy. Frankly, I wasn't even thinking about the hour bonuses or any other immediate recompense I might gain for my effort. Yet my satisfaction was profound when I realized that I would be able to happily and honorably present myself to both my mother and my benefactors at the Ministry of Assistance. When he was about to take his leave, Tobias again embraced me and said, I wish you all peace of Jesus, a good night and useful work. Tomorrow morning at eight, you can rest. Twelve hours of work per day is normally our limit, but we are under special circumstances. I answered that I was sincerely content with his decisions. Alone with a large number of nurses, I began to take a more kindly interest in the patients. 
Of all the attendants working with me, I was greatly impressed by Narcissa's spontaneous kindness as she helped everyone like a mother. Attracted by her benevolence, I tried to stay close to her. It was easy to enjoy the pleasure of her simple and kind conversation. The lovable old woman was like a sublime book of goodness and wisdom. Have you been working here long, my sister? I asked at a certain point of our friendly conversation. Yes, I've been on active work duty in the chambers of rectification for six years and a few months, but I must stay here three more years in order to get my wish fulfilled. Before my silent inquiring look, Narcissa said, I need a very serious endorsement. What do you mean by that? I must meet some beloved spirits on earth because we have some evolutionary work to do together. My past was full of wrongs, and I begged for a long time in vain for the opportunity to accomplish my aim. I was anguished and afflicted. Finally, I was advised to talk to Minister Veneranda, and our benefactor from regeneration promised to endorse my proposal at the Ministry of Assistance. But she required that I first work here for ten years, so that I could correct certain unbalanced sentiments. At first, I wanted to decline the offer. The requirement seemed too hard, but I later realized that she was right. After all, the advice was intended for my benefit, not hers. And I profited a great deal by having accepted her advice. I feel more balanced and humane now, and I believe I shall live my upcoming experience on earth with spiritual dignity. I was about to express my admiration, but one of the patients near us yelled, Narcissa! Narcissa! This devoted sister had become the spiritual mother of suffering spirits, and I had no right to detain her any longer out of mere personal curiosity.